a number is chosen at random from 1000 to 9999, what is the probability that it has at least one zero? A variation of this problem was asked in SAT, I believe, and this is considered, you know, one of the hard problems that you can get uh, on uh, probability and permutation combination in SAT or other standardized tests. Now, there is actually a, a easier or a shortcut method of solving the problem, which I'm going to show you here. So, we start by considering how many numbers are there from 1000 to 9999. So, that's kind of the total number of you know, potential selections uh, that I can have going through all of these numbers. So, this is just a simple count. So, this will be 9999 minus 1000 plus 1. So, that's a total of 9000 numbers. Now, out of these 9000 numbers, if I pick one number at random, how many of those numbers, in how many ways can I select that number so that it, had, it has got at least one zero? So, this is the question that we need to actually answer in order to find the probability. However, there are the easier question to answer and that will help us solve this particular problem would be how many ways can I pick a number from 1000 to 9999 such that the number would have no zeros. So, we are considering and, you know, the complement of what we have been asked. And in many cases like these, the complement problem is actually easier uh, to solve than the actual problem. So we consider the problem as in how many ways can we pick a number from 1000 to 9999 so that uh, the number has got no zeros. So, this is going to be a four-digit number because it's from 1000 to 9999. And in order to have no zeros in any of those four places, uh, the number of ways in which we can select uh, each of those four digits is basically, you know, any number from 1 to 9. So, total number of uh, ways in which you can, you know, place the digits so that no digit in any of those four places is zero is basically nine multiplied by nine multiplied by nine multiplied by nine. So it's nine to the power four. And that comes to six, five, six, one. So out of these numbers from 1000 to 9999, we have six, five, six, one numbers that have got no zeros uh, in its digits. So, how many has got at least one zero? So, that would be simply, you know, you take, you subtract 6561 from the total number of uh, numbers you have from 1000 to 9999, which is 9000. So, you get 9000 minus 6561, which is 2439. So, the probability that chosen number has at least one zero would be 2439 divided by 9000. And that comes to 271 by 1000. So that's the probability in this case. Now next consider a, a similar problem, uh, which we can actually you know, solve using the same uh, strategy of going for the complement of the problem first rather than the problem itself. And this particular uh, probability problem states that uh, probability that A can solve a problem is one-third, prob probability that B can solve the same problem is one-fourth. What is the probability that the problem is solved if both A and B try the problem independently? So, when does the problem get solved? The problem gets solved when 
at least one of A or B can solve. Both of them do not necessarily have to solve the problem successfully. Even if one or the other can solve it successfully, uh, the problem gets solved, right? So what is the complement of this? And that might be the easier question to answer in this case. When does the problem not get solved? So that's when A cannot solve the problem and B cannot solve the problem. So both A and B are unsuccessful in solving the problem and that's when the problem does not get solved when both A and B try the problem independently. So if PA is the probability that A can solve the problem and that's given as one third, then the complement of that PA dot or PA dash, however you want to call it, is the probability that A cannot solve the problem that will be one minus one third and that's two third. And similarly, probability that B cannot solve the problem will be one minus one fourth and that's uh, three upon four. So probability that A can't solve the problem and B can't solve the problem. So it's probability of A complement and B complement. And in this case, since these are independent events because A and B are trying the problem independently, the probability of both the events A dot and B dot occurring simultaneously it will be simply the the product of the individual probabilities. So that's kind of a basic uh, you know rule of finding probability of independent events. So the probability of both uh, events occurring simultaneously, if they're independent, is simply the product of their individual pro probabilities. So in this case, we already know what P A complement is. We know what P B complement is. So P A dot and P B dot, we know we take the product of the two and that comes to half. Uh, so the probability that at least one of A or B can solve the problem will be simply one minus half, that's half.